What's up everybody, welcome back. Patrick here in this video, we're continuing on with the financial planning chapter. And we're now gonna be talking about an internal versus sustainable growth rate. What they both mean, the differences between them. So let's start off with the internal growth rate. Internal growth rate is basically the rate at which a firm can grow without any external financing. So any increases on that right side of the balance sheet all have to be internally produced. So I'm going to explain the internal growth rate initially through this example. It's a very simple example. And there's actually a formula for the internal growth rate, which I'll show you at the end. I want to first show you the example so you can see how it all actually works versus me just giving you a formula and you not understanding it. And then you'll see how everything just comes together nice and smoothly at the end. So. We have a company, simple balance sheet. They got assets of 500,000 on the left side. The debt is 200,000, equity is 300,000. And then this company has net income of 50,000. So that last line of the income statement. Now out of this 50,000, let's assume that 30% is the payout ratio. So 30% of the earnings or the net income is being paid out as dividends. So 30% of 50,000, that gives us 15,000. So that means that 70%, let's actually label this here. So 15,000 is dividends. So that means that 70% of that net income is going to be retained in the company. So 70% of 50,000 gives us 35,000. And this is retained <clears throat> for growth. All right, so basically the dividends and the retained earnings, they both add up to 50,000, 30%, 70%. And then what happens from this income statement, what's gonna happen to the balance sheet? Well, we know from previous videos, I've mentioned that the retain earnings or the addition to retain earnings is going to flow into the equity. So that means that the new equity amount is going to grow by 35,000. So instead of 300,000, we're now going to have equity of 335,000. So the assets now are going to be the debt plus the equity. So the debt of 200,000 plus the equity of 335,000. So the assets here are going to be 535,000, right? Because we're not taking on any external financing. Any increases in debt or equity have to be internally produced and you can't produce debt internally so that's gonna stay constant at 200,000. We're not taking on any external debt. And then any incre uh, increases in equity, they have to come from the retained earnings portion of the net income, the amount that we retain, which was 35,000 in this case. So the equity grew by 35,000. So the beginning equity of 300,000 we started with plus 35,000 gives us 335,000 for the new equity. That means the assets grew from 500,000 to 535,000. Okay, so how much did this company grow by? Well, the assets, the left side of the balance sheet went from 500,000 to 535,000. So what's the percentage change going to be? Well, we know percentage change is what? new amount minus old amount all over the old amount. So basically the new amount is 535,000. I'm just gonna write 535 minus the old amount of 500 all over the old amount of 500. So we would end up getting 35,000 in the numerator divided by 500,000 in the denominator and that gives us 0.07 or 7%. So that's how much the firm grew without any external financing. It was just internally produced with that retained earnings. So that there here represents our internal 
growth rate. Right? It's the amount that the assets grew by, the firm grew by, without any external financing. No new debt was issued, no new equity was issued. So the assets grew from 500,000 to 535,000, so the firm grew by 7%. There was no external financing, so the internal growth rate was 7%. Now, if you wanna take the internal growth rate and break it down into a simple formula, it's basically the return on assets times the retention ratio. All right, so breaking this formula down further, we know that return on assets is what? It's net income over assets. Now this assets here, it's always the beginning assets. So whatever the assets were in the beginning of the period that you produce that net income. Times the retention ratio. Um, retention ratio is basically the retained earnings over the earnings or over the net income. And then in our previous example, it was 70%, right? Retained earnings of 35,000 divided by net income of 50,000. And that gives us 70%. And sometimes this uh, retention ratio can be represented as one minus the payout ratio. Right, the payout ratio is basically the dividends over the net income. So we were actually given the payout ratio of 30% initially so one minus 30% or one minus 0.3 rather, this has to be in decimals, gives us 0.7, which was the retention ratio. So a bunch of different ways to figure out the retention ratio or the payout ratio. Sometimes they'll be given either or, or sometimes you'll have to figure them out with other information you're given in dollar terms. But in general, this is basically the formula for the internal growth rate. And if you test it, with the information in the previous example, the net income of that company we worked with was 50,000. The beginning assets were what? 500,000, right? The beginning assets, not the ending assets of 535,000. So the beginning assets of 500,000 times one minus the payout ratio, one minus 0 0.3 or 0 0.7 in this bracket, if you multiply all of that out, you would end up getting 0 0.07 or 7%, which is the same uh, internal growth rate that we got by doing it manually, by increasing that right side of the balance sheet and the left side of the balance sheet and then seeing how much the assets increase by, they increase by 7%. Well, now you know how this formula works intuitively through an example. But if they ask you for the internal growth rate, usually you're just gonna be using this formula here. So you can um, plug everything in and you end up getting that same internal growth rate of 7% that we used in the example. And next up is the sustainable growth rate. So the sustainable growth rate is the rate at which a firm can grow while keeping the debt to equity ratio constant. So same thing as I did with the internal growth rate, I'm gonna show how this sustainable growth rate works through the same example. So notice the current balance sheet and the uh, net income, payout ratio, retention ratio, all the same. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the internal growth rate and how the sustainable growth rate works. So let's read the definition one more time. Rate at which a firm can grow while keeping the debt to equity ratio constant. And actually I just realized I wanna add something into this definition. So. Um, just add this in end, uh, issuing no new equity, right? Cause you could keep the debt to equity ratio constant and just keep increasing both pretty much forever, <clears throat> but that's not what the uh, sustainable growth rate is about. So it's basically the rate at which a firm can grow while keeping the debt to equity ratio constant and issuing no new equity. So the key thing with the sustainable growth rate, the key difference is that the debt to equity ratio is going to be constant. So the first thing we want to do with the balance sheet we have is figure out what the debt to equity ratio is. And it's pretty simple. It's 200,000 over 300,000 and that's just going to reduce to 2 over 3. 
right? So the debt to equity ratio for the new balance sheet has to be two over three as well. Same debt to equity ratio as the current balance sheet. So net income, 50,000, 30% paid as dividends, 15,000, 70%, which is 35,000 is retained in the company. And we know that that 35,000 is gonna flow into equity. So this equity here is gonna grow organically or internally by 35,000. So the new equity amount now is going to be 335,000, like it was before. However, now we can take on debt, but only up to the amount that the debt to equity ratio is going to be constant. And that's the difference between the sustainable growth rate and the internal growth rate. If you remember, the internal growth rate was the rate at which a firm can grow with no external financing. So we just grew that equity amount, the debt stayed constant, and then the assets grew um, in proportion to that right side. So the right side and the left side balance. But in this case, we can actually take on more debt, but only up to the point where the debt to equity ratio is gonna be constant, right? Because we're not gonna be issuing any new equity. This increase in equity only came from the retained earnings. So, what we have to figure out is how much debt we can take on, right? So basically the debt to equity ratio two over three from the current balance sheet, the balance sheet before, has to equal the amount of debt on the new balance sheet, which is X over the amount of new equity on the balance sheet, which is 335,000. Right, so now what we can do is we can solve for this x by cross multiplying. So three times x gives us three x, and then two times 335,000, that gives us 670,000. So then solving for x, dividing both sides by three, we get x equaling 223,333 dollars and 33 cents, but I'll just round it to the nearest dollar. So that there represents the um, new debt on the balance sheet. So 223,333 dollars. All right, so we started off with $200,000 worth of debt. And now the debt is $223,333 worth. So the new debt that we issued was the difference between those numbers. So the new debt that we took on was $23,333. Right, so with the sustainable growth rate, you're allowed to take on new debt but only up to the point where that debt to equity ratio is gonna be constant. The equity, we can't take any, um, we can't issue any new equity, but that equity will grow from the retained earnings. So hence we can have the debt grow as well, but only by this amount, up to where that debt to equity ratio is constant. So now, we can add these numbers up to get what our new assets are gonna be. So 335,000 of equity plus debt of $223,333, that would give us what? Five, five, eight, three, three, three. So our new assets now, our assets grew by $58,333 total asset amount is $558,333, right? So our assets grew by more than when we didn't take on any external financing. When we didn't take on any external financing, our assets only grew by 35,000, but now the assets are growing by that 35,000 that the equity increased by and that $23,333 that the debt increased by. So how much did the firm grow? Well, the assets, they grew from 500,000 to this new amount of 558, 
three, three, three. So to find the rate of growth of the firm, we can just find what the percentage change in the assets was, which is the new minus the old over the old. So we take the new amount of the assets minus the old amount of the assets divided by the old amount of the assets. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting 0.1167 or 11.67%. So that there is your sustainable growth rate. Right, so it's the rate at which your firm grew or your assets grew while keeping that debt to equity ratio constant and issuing no new equity. And finally, the general formula for the sustainable growth rate is basically the return on equity times the retention ratio. And return on equity, we know it's what? Net income over the equity amount, and it's always gonna be the beginning equity of the period. times the retention ratio, and the retention ratio we can also rewrite as one minus the payout ratio. So both of those mean the same thing. And if we test this formula with our previous example, so the net income was what, 50,000. The beginning equity was 300,000. And then the retention ratio was 0 0.7. And when you multiply all that out, you end up getting 0.1167 or 11.67%, which is the same uh, rate of growth that we got when we did it manually. So now you know how this formula works. So you can do it manually or you could do it faster with this formula, but I wanted to show you the example for both the internal growth rate and the sustainable growth rate, just so you can see how both of them work. So doing a brief summary of both of these rates, internal growth rate, sustainable growth rate, basically both of them don't allow any new external equity to be issued. Any increase in equity has to be internally produced with the retained earnings from net income. Internal growth rate, no new debt is allowed. Sustainable growth rate, it allows you to take on new debt, but only up to the point where the debt to equity ratio is going to be the same or constant as it was before. And another point I want to make is that the sustainable growth rate, let's label it SGR, is always going to be greater than or equal to the internal growth rate. Right, and that makes sense because the sustainable growth rate it's going to allow for more growth in the assets because of that new debt that we're allowed to take versus with the internal growth rate, there's no new debt that's allowed. So the sustainable growth rate is always gonna be greater than or equal to that internal growth rate. The only times that both of these can equal, the only time that the sustainable growth rate will equal the internal growth rate is if a company has no debt. So if a company has no debt, then the original debt to equity ratio is zero. So to keep it the same, you can't take on any new debt and then both of these would be the same. Basically, both of them would not allow for debt to be issued, right? So sustainable growth rate is greater than the internal growth rate usually, but if a company has no debt, then the sustainable growth rate is always gonna equal the internal growth rate.